Greetings, Kerbonauts. This is Kerbal Space Program. I'm Bob Fitch, and I'm bringing you another deconstructed satellite. This is the second satellite that I have deconstructed. I have a different video that if you want to see some of the details about like mods I was using and how I use the robotics a little bit more in detail, you can take a look at that video and I will include a link down here in the bottom right of this one. So take a look there now. The too long didn't read version of that is that most of what's going on in this video has to do with Infernal Robotics by Magic Smoke Industries and Remote Tech 2, uh, let's see, a lot of KW rocketry parts, AIES parts, surface lights, a few other tidbits, but we're about in orbit, so let's take a look at the deployment now. I'll begin by decoupling the ascent stage here and then just temporarily switching over to it just for a moment, point it retrograde to my orbit and then throttle it up and switch back to the satellite. Let that get a little bit out of the way there. Okay, so we're going to go full throttle and then switch back to the satellite. And now that's going to deorbit itself because it's just going to keep going in that direction until it runs out of fuel. And that is going to take it back down. You can see there it's already doing that. And so it's going back in and re-entering, leaving me no space garbage. Before I actually open anything up here, I want to put in a couple speed values in there. Okay, so now let's open this up. So we'll begin with the sides. So they open up like that. And then the sides themselves come down. And I have those in solar arms. And now we're going to move on to dishes. We have the primary dishes, the bigger ones. We're going to extend like this. And then open those up. And then these side dishes here are my secondary dishes uh, the number of antenna is just for sort of simulation of a real tdrs satellite and has absolutely no effect whatsoever other than the one that i have extended in the middle which is actually allowing me communication right now with my remote tech 2 network uh, so there you have it i have my solar dishes core uh, it's got some RCS on there. The RCS is mounted here out on the sides, allowing it to fine tune its orbit. So if I were to turn on my RCS and say I was going a little bit too fast right now, I could get pointed in retrograde, uh, hit the H key, and then watch my orbital period drop down. Suppose I didn't want 155 second minutes and 40 seconds. Suppose I just wanted it to be uh, at exactly 40 then I could use my RCS to slow myself down into an orbital period of an hour 55 exactly and that's it I'll give it one quick spin in the sunlight here so you can get a good view of it and then we'll switch down into the vehicle assembly building and show how it's put together Working from the bottom up, got your basic KW rocketry parts down here, some fins to stabilize it in the Ferrum Aerospace Dynamic model, some regular fuel, a KW fairing, take the side off the fairing and get in here and start taking a look at the satellite itself. So we don't need any of that. I have the lower stage on here with a decoupler from AIES parts. It has its own antenna on it so it can continue communicating with the network allowing me to switch over to it and deorbit it. Some batteries on the side there for the couple seconds really that it takes in order to start deorbiting. The sides are put on with hinges here as well as some opening hinges. You can see them right there and right there, creating a three-part panel. I'll take one of those up here so you can get a better look at it. So it has AIES solar panels on the inside and the outside, regular structural panels, 
a surface light attached to the top, a hinge here, and a hinge at the other side, allowing those to open up. You saw the other arm, which is composed of, we'll move that over here for right now, composed of a hinge here, here, and here, allowing them to go up and over the top, very similar to a real TDRS satellite. Another surface light there, as well as the dish. Get that up and out of the way. Got the secondary dishes, they're pretty basic, just a dish, an arm, and a hinge there. A whole bunch of symmetried antenna, one in the middle and then several uh, rows around that. A few surface lights, the 500 kilometer antenna that's always active allowing me to get into the communications network of Remote Tech 2 right away. Some mono propellant, battery, and a CPU core, a couple more surface lights, and that's it. Looking back real quick here at the servo configuration, you can see what I did was I put all the different dishes in their own group, and the solar panel spreading in its own group, and I took care of some of that using hotkeys. I'll load the satellite back up real quick so you can see what the hotkey configurations looked like. So while I'm making my ascent, I need the antenna open to keep in communication with the remote tech network. So that's on one. The second one opens up. Let me get this back out here. Grab the side again one more time. And we'll zoom in a bit. Group two starts the the two sides of the panels causing them to extend open. I like to go just one, two, three, four, five, and I order things in the order that I'm going to do them so it makes it easier. Three activates the hinges that bring this down so the whole side extends out with the solar panels. Four opens up the solar there, although I had actually in this case done that on my ascent because it was dark I didn't think it was going to be very visible and I needed to make sure that it, they were available when I came out of the dark and into the light again. The three arms that open up the dishes, the main dishes, are all together. All of their three hinges are together there on five. Six opens up. Once these arms have extended it opens up those and seven brings down the main dishes that are already deployed because they're solid dishes and there is no eight. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed it, Kerbonauts. Good luck with your satellites and I'll see you later.